this is going to be a different video, but I thought it might be cool to do something like this. So what I'm going to be doing is looking through my old math notebooks, because in my Q&A video, they asked me, hey, have you done your own research? And so all of it, all of the t new research is in these these books. It's not new research. Don't think it's like groundbreaking stuff, guys. It's usually just old stuff or just ramblings that didn't go anywhere. <laughs> so here I have complex number stuff and a little bit of linear algebra. And that's when I started experimenting with my handwriting about how I should draw W's. It's, I don't, why? Who knows? Okay, so then you can see me calculating the magnitude of some complex numbers. This is in my, like, sixth grade math book, I'm, I don't know. Now here is um, something I did because I wanted to just do an example of some trig. Yeah, it's um, something else. <laughs> My handwriting used to be a lot neater. I don't know why I let it go down the drain. Here's me learning about the Laplace transform and uh, differential equations. It looks like I just did random stuff on a bunch of these pages, which is definitely right. Right here, I have a page on group theory where I just wrote down a bunch of stuff that I learned about group theory. And then on this side... It's also group theory, but it's on uh, cyclic groups. And then at the bottom, I have stuff about homomorphisms. Now, this is about the um, uh, symmetric group, I'm pretty sure, and about homomorphisms as well. But at the bottom, it's symmetric group stuff. Okay, so right here, I had stuff about um, the general linear group. Ooh. There we go. Yeah, a bunch. And up here, I tried to do a formalization of 1 over 0, which is wheel theory. But I um didn't end up getting it right. Um, right here, I have vector space stuff. So I tried to do uh, the determinant of A times B by longhand, which I did. I did that. Look at that. So I calculated the determinant of a matrix A times a matrix B and proved that that is equal to the determinant of A times the determinant of B, which is absolutely insane. Now this is my ramblings. Uh, joint theory. This is something that I wanted to do, but it never worked out the way I wanted it to. I used to have a latex PDF on it, but I think I deleted it out of a moment of vulnerability. But look at that. I went all out on this. I'm not going to explain it because I've sort of forgotten it as well, but it's cool. It looks very cool. I could understand why I wanted to do this. Yeah, just a bunch of random stuff. Let's wait until I get somewhere. Yep, axioms of set theory. Look at that. Uh, this is my period of wanting to learn logic. I wanted to learn all the stuff about logic and axioms. There is stuff on infinite ordinals that I was trying to understand. And I ended up getting really far into that. I have a, um, a, um, article on it on planktie.me. Really cool stuff. Uh, that's when I started to learn about it. And here's the real numbers. Um... It's made by, and so he made these surreal numbers. So this is me trying to figure out surreal numbers. It's cool. I can understand why I wanted to write it down because it's hard to understand. Now here is more ramblings on joint theory that I tried to save by axiomatizing it. So I said connections or A dash B. I tried to do it somewhat like um set theory or euclidean geometry but it didn't it didn't work out <laughs> and this this was just the beginnings of it now this one 
It's my major notebook. This is like the one that I use the most. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Right here, right at the top, you can see me um, showing the completion of a space. So of a, a given a metric space, you can complete it by just doing the things under an equivalence class. And then uh, there at the bottom is measure theory. I kind of gave up on doing the completion because I don't know, I was lazy, I guess. Here's me trying to understand Riemann integration at the bottom, and then at the top is just not Riemann integration. It's on other stuff. This is because I think I took a um, test on real analysis, and I wanted to test my knowledge. Right up here is measure theory, but I gave up on that right below it. Then right below it, I proved that the set of algebraic numbers is countable, and irrational numbers are uncountable, and that the unions and stuff... So it's just my real analysis notes at the beginning. Now this looks like a bunch of scribbles. I think it's on compact sets. You know, I wasn't really going for neatness on these notes, even though I was on the other ones. You should see those. Um, and then this is me proving the completion one. I finally came back to it. Ah! Here's more joint, uh, joint theory stuff. It didn't work out. And I tried to define a basis for joint sets and stuff. Here's more measure theory, and then below it, doing some random stuff. Here's more on Riemann integration. Except this is neat notes, because I wanted to redo my notes and make them super neat. And then on the back, here's more, more joint stuff. Didn't work out. Really a shame. But it was to solve this one frog question. You can see me... Uh, post on that on Plankty.me, the forum. So on the forum, you can see stuff about the frog question, and I ended up doing a bunch of stuff about joint theory to try and understand it. I couldn't really get very far at all. Now here, I have stuff on real analysis, and this is from real analysis homework, and I just did the homework. And then here is stuff about the convergence of s s um of functions, because I wanted to understand that. This stuff is on conversions and compact sets. This one is on convergence. It's just all convergence stuff, me proving convergence. It's from a worksheet I was doing. I don't remember what exactly the worksheet was, but here's even more stuff from that worksheet. Uh, I think it's from, um, Rudin. I think it was from Rudin. I think these are the problem questions from Rudin. I'm not exactly sure, but um, I just know I did a bunch. Here's more stuff on real analysis, uh, which is um, basically topology, but it's on metric spaces only. Now here's my attempt at keeping consistent notation for all of my spaces. Didn't work out very well. Now this, this is the crazy part. Now if you've if you know my resource as well, you know I always recommend W.E. Horaeus International Winter School on Gravity and Light. That is great lecture series. I took detailed notes on it. Look at that. I had all my definitions written out like this. I had stuff on continuous maps. This is the first lecture on topologies. This is where I first learned about topology. This is what got me into topology in the first place. And then I have... Um, some stuff, more topology stuff, and then on the back is about manifolds. And I um, drew a bunch of pictures that matched what he was doing. Here I have stuff about charts, chart maps, good pictures. I always drew the pictures along with him. Uh, Frederick Schuller really is great. He's the one who got me into it. And here's me answering the the exercises that they have I, on all their things. If you go on to the, the lecture series, you can see that in the description they have a link to their website and there you can see all the problem questions that go along. Here I have a lot of them. And they also have tutorials and I follow those tutorials quite a bit. Now on here um, is on vector spaces, multilinear algebra. I um, tried to use consistent notation 
kind of bailed on it later on because it didn't end up working very well. Okay, I have all this stuff on linear map, spaces, covectors. Right here I had to switch out the pen to pink because this one ran out of ink. Or I think I might have even lost it. No, I think it just ran out of ink. Right there I have stuff about tensors. And now you can see the rest of my notes are in this pink. Now, fun fact is that I did this over vacation. So my brother, he plays baseball, he travel baseball. And so they are going to um, a baseball tournament for vacation. We needed to go to a baseball tournament with all of his friends. And we all roomed in one house. And instead of being normal, well, I, I still socialized, yes, of course. But I ended up going into my room and watching these lectures for the majority of the time, which is not normal. So we have stuff on bases now, and then over here right at the bottom we have the homework, which um, Connie Adu or the axioms right here. You can see I was really dedicated to writing these notes. I should do that more often. Now, here's more on the homework. This, this was really long homework. Okay. And I said right here, that was insane. And then I practiced my Greek letters because I kept messing it up. Okay, so um, here's on differentiable manifolds. I have all my diagrams. I was a good note taker, I guess you could say. Um, I used the notation O for the topology just because Frederick did. So right here, more stuff, more stuff, more stuff, more stuff. Oh, I used O for open sets, not U. That was when I was, I was trying to be as consistent as possible, but didn't end up working. Um, right there I have stuff about the differentiable structures on N space and Euclidean space. And then down here I have stuff about exercises. So, yeah, a bunch of diagrams still. It was cool. This was like the peak of my math education. Here I have stuff on the tangent space. Now this is where I started getting confused, where I sort of wasn't entirely understanding all of it. But I continued on in the lecture series because I was so dedicated to learning. And that's, that's really what got me here, is that I was just, I didn't give up when I didn't understand it. I just kept going at it until I did understand it. Okay, so here I have stuff about how it's a vector space, stuff about charts. I used to write QED instead of the box, I don't know why. So here I have stuff on um, tangent space. I think I switched. I used X here for manifolds, even though I should have used M because that would follow it along, but... And there's the transition between the bases. This is cool covector stuff. On the back we have a bunch of stuff, that's the homework. I'm gonna skip past that part. Oh man, these take up huge amounts of paper. This is still the homework. I was so dedicated to getting this. And I ended up understanding it, quite obviously, because I kept going. Now here is stuff about bundles. It's just going along with the lectures. Tangent bundle stuff, and then proving that it is, that the tangent space is a manifold. That was a cool proof. Um, tensor field stuff. And homework again. It's cool. It's really cool to see how my education went along. And now I switched to pencil. Look at that. Okay, so now this is uh, when I got to connections. So, I went ahead and defined- oh, well, they, they say connections, but really it's a covariant derivative. I don't know. You can say either, but I like covariant derivative better now. So, stuff about- all the stuff, I use the um, Christoffel symbols, this is where they're introduced, yada yada yada, stuff about the structure that's added on. I was getting by. I really, really wanted to learn all this stuff. Just so you know how complicated it can get, look at that. Look at that. Imagine two years ago me trying to learn this. Insane. So, right here, stuff on matrices. Okay, now we have parallel transport. This is just a bunch of stuff. It's really cool. Watch their lecture series on it. I'm going to skip to the points where, um, oh, there's stuff about the, the curvatures and the metric. Now, this is line derivative. And then I stopped. I stopped taking notes after that. After the 11th lecture, I stopped taking notes. And the reason for that is because I got into physics, and I could just watch the videos and understand it like that. But, um, right here, is when I um, tried to illustrate a bunch of stuff, because I wanted to um, make an article about Klein bottles. And then this is me trying to memorize a rap song for social studies about the north and the, about colonies. Really cool. This was my breaking point. This is when I knew that I wanted to be a math person. Okay? Like before this, you know, man, I could have been something else, but this lecture series pulled me in. That was one of the major reasons why I even started making YouTube videos, other than Black Pen, Red Pen, of course. But it's because I really wanted to understand math. Now, this is my notes for Algebra 1. 
and you can see how unbelievably small my handwriting was back then. It's it's gotten so much bigger. Look at this. That is insane. How absolutely insane and neat I was back then. I've gone down the drain recently. I should try to do this stuff like this again. Look at that, how nice that all looks. Now, okay, look, look at this. That is insane how great my handwriting was. I wrote in cursive because in fifth grade, my teacher, Mrs. Clark, uh, she made us write in cursive. I was the only one who went along with it. She didn't take off points, but she said she wanted us to write in cursive from then on. So I wrote in cursive from then on. And now we're getting onto my linear algebra notes. The neatest things in the world. Oh my lord. Look at how nice those are. Ugh. I used to write so nice. Ah, oh, I should really start doing that again. Why on earth did I s stop this? Look! That is so nice. It's It shows my learning curve. Here I'm doing the null space. Now here, um, I have stuff on linear regression, uh, more notes. Let's, let's skip a bit ahead. Hey, here is when we learned set theory in Algebra 1. And you can see slowly my handwriting gets bigger and bigger and worse and worse. And that, until you get to a point where, where it's like how I am now still small and I still wrote in cursive. This year I gave up on writing in cursive because uh, people couldn't read it, my teachers couldn't read it, so I just stopped doing that. Look at this. Insane. Oh man, that's stuff about partial fractions, me trying to do areas and stuff. Oh man. Look at this, I just did a bunch of integrals and stuff. Uh, stuff about quantum mechan basic quantum mechanics that I was trying to follow along with. Um, here, I did Khan Academy stuff and I wrote all of it down on calculus. So this is when I started learning calculus, right at the back of this math notebook during the summer right before I got into seventh grade. Um, I hear more stuff about calculus. So this was also sort of the parts where I started getting into stuff. I tried to learn how to write all the symbols right. Started to learn all the stuff. Taylor series right there. And then that's it for this notebook. Now this last one is my group theory stuff. Group theory notes, just about homomorphisms. This is on the uh, Harvard lectures on abstract algebra so right there I have stuff right there I have stuff it's all just basic um group theory I tried to do the notes nights nice until I got to here and here and then the notes just sort of crumbled and I wanted to follow along with the lectures which go very quickly and um here they're still legible the proofs I put in boxes in, and you get to this. And then, oh boy. Oh god, what happened there? Still, you can you can decipher it. And then, boom, bop, bop, last page. Everything else is blank. Those are my notebooks. You guys wanted to know what were in them. I should really start writing notes again. Just because that can actually help me, um figure out stuff, how I'm going to explain stuff, so maybe I should write notes again. I think I'm going to stick with just looking at the book and understanding it, but notes can really help. The major thing that I tried to do was joint theory. Uh, the idea behind it was to solve the frog question, that's what I structured it around, and I did like stuff about maps, I tried to, tried to work it into a more general setting, and it didn't really work all out that all that well. Who knows? Great. Uh, you guys are pretty great. Mmm. Thanks. Bye.